<laughs> so as as um, one of the projects that we kind of started uh, working together uh, as a group here in the Blender user group back in January or February is a personal project I've been working on for the last four years. Uh, and it's gotten to the point where it could use some 3D models. We finished the animatic, the story, the script, the storyboard, all the voices are done. And uh, and so the group, every you know, five or six different people here, kind of pitched in and started um, putting together the 3D models. But to just give you a little bit of an overview of that project, um, I have to load it here. Just. Yeah. What you doing? Huh? You start out with a box and they extruded the tape. Mm -hmm. You pull it out and you pull it out. Oh, I bet you don't have to. I think that might have been Sterling Coffee. Don't worry about it. Well, I have this mostly as a PowerPoint, so I, and I actually won't be able to open that up on this computer, but um, I will pull up the, the website. Uh, it's called Little Red Cap. Is this? Oh, you're sleeping on this. <laughs> <laughs> Too many controls. <laughs> and it's basically, a, it was, the idea was to create an anime-inspired uh, film that we used a lot of low frame rate techniques uh, to and to kind of tackle a longer production than um, just you know a two or three or four minute animation. And so, uh, about four years ago, started the initial script, and then um, I've been working on it in different pieces since. Then last fall, I was able to cast two professional actors here in Portland. Uh, Laura Faye Smith is a professional voice actress. She ended up doing the voice of Kiska, and then and another actor has been in a couple movies that are kind of indie indie films here. Um, Andrew Harris is the the villain, and so once that happened, then it, it, the production kicked into gear. Um, <laughs> um, just to kind of give people an idea as far as how Blender has been used. You know, <laughs> The film is a 22-minute production, so it's definitely on the longer side. Um, and currently, like I said, all the, the voices and the sound has all been done. It's just a matter of the production work. Oops. What is it doing? So this is the opening. Uh, the opening shot is actually done with a combination of 2D and 3D and Blender. Just cancel that. <laughs> it's, it's an advertisement. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's not here. It's my damn computer. I got song. Is that our stuff? Yeah. yeah, but I don't know where the video is. What are we watching it? Anyway, that's a an introduction, um, just kind of the the use of the two D animation style, the three D freestyling, and using the freestyle integration. Um, So this gives it was done in Blender. So anyway, I'm not going to... The only other part I'm going to kind of show is the... this scene here where it's just more representative of the finished product. Uh, mixing of the two. So. Anyway, everything I've, sorry about the delay there, everything's like, pause. Um, but yeah, now it's just pretty much a matter of 
doing all the lip sync, uh, 2D drawings, and mixing the 3D backgrounds. Jamelian's done quite a few of the more complex models, and so I'm going to let him kind of show some of the models that he's done that haven't been rendered yet, but um, will serve as kind of backdrops for different parts of the scene. Definitely. I think I've done just three, and I'm working on one major asset for the film. That's the, uh, that is the um, Victorian stove, which I'll show last. Let's see here, blender. And we will get out of that. Go to a little red cap. See the first thing I uh, no, that's this is the second thing I did was the uh, old Soviet radio. And you can see the the uh, let's see the here's the photo reference uh, photo that I was using to go by that uh, right there. And here's the model itself. And of course, I've just put on basic materials to distinguish the different parts. Um, don't know if anybody needs inside uh, modeling techniques, but this and the uh, TV were very basic, uh, boxy, and very easy to streamline the geometry, so there wasn't a whole lot of noise. A uh, whole lot of unnecessary vertices of faces and uh, very minimal on triangles, if none at all. The one thing that I uh, learned on was this uh, little uh, vent piece. Rather than putting in extra geometry everywhere, I learned from one video that says do pieces and parts rather than everything, all the details all in one. So the, the vent is actually a separate uh, object, and I've just lined it up real nice to be right in there so I don't have all the extra geometry on the, on the component itself, on the radio itself. So that was, that was fun and experiencing right there. That was a lot of learning, but not nearly as much as that stove, stove radio. Let's see, the TV. Soviet TV was uh, fun because of its design, but there wasn't anything fantastic again on that. Um, one point, though, some people might not realize what that uh, circular object is right there, but because the older TV technology had such small screens, they, uh, they were accompanied with uh, magnifying glasses so that you could watch them. <laughs> and that's what that is. Let's see here. I could go to uh, the reference Reference photo I think we have on here. Nope. Let's see. I don't know if we have references still on there. No. No, I took them off. No. Uh-oh, what's that? Uh-oh, more, more advertising. Uh-oh. Okay, um, there's the uh, reference photo right there for that TV. And uh, let's see here. I will go to the stove now. This was some fun, fun stuff right here. This is a, started out with the basic uh, shapes for the entire overall stove. I will go to a reference uh, photo to show you what we were actually doing here. And you can see this is one project and a half for all the uh, geometry detail. That was a little bit more than just being uh, textured or whatever. Um, so with that, after starting with uh, geometry detail, I cut off the various portions to use as guides and uh, worked on that. The cap here, look, the crown. I'll do the crown was, uh, again, there's nothing notable out of all of this except, again, uh, the uh, idea of doing pieces and parts. Come on. It will go. Come on. There we go. Um, as you can see here, this... Uh, this center piece 
is all by itself, not a part, so that the, the, the intricate geometry doesn't complicate the, the geometry on the outer, on the outer um, frame of that. That's about the only trick that uh, is worth mentioning on this. After that, let's see here. Okay, this was the most challenging to date, but I've still got the, the rest of it to do. This is the uh, what I'm calling the, uh, gr the crown vent. And uh, basically what I did there was uh, taking um, the shell as a guide and um, using that shell to snap on uh, a box modeling, but it, was, it wasn't a box really, it was just uh, uh, quads. <clears throat> and having the uh, full snap on there so that I didn't have to do uh, control snap, just uh, worked and reworked and reworked the uh, design, then added a solidify, and uh, after the solidify was added on, then I, I had to do some things, uh, then I did, uh, let me get into it, then I did some, um, so, some, surface 3d surface features and pulled up the center and pulled down the sides to give it a rounded feel on that then when you add on the x and y mirror that thing is looking nice now for that whole grill top it's enough to impress me but there may be many other people out there that aren't impressed by that that's fine but I'm a beginner. <laughs> that is, this is something fantastic for me. <laughs> um, I have done some more since then, and that is the the uh, this part here. What was I calling that? Come on, the crown base. Come on. Uh oh, no, I don't want to. There, the hearth rim. And again, let's see here. This I did, I tried experimenting to do a professional work and did a, started out with having a, having this one basic model follow a curve. And I was going to do a curve around there, but I couldn't get it to work, you know, doing a curve modifier. And I was spending so much time trying to get that curve modifier to work that uh, I could have had this all done manually. So I stopped that and went done, did it manually and just copied and moved, copied and moved, duplicated and moved and, and got, the, got that done there. And then did the uh, XY mirror modifier. <clears throat> so there that is. So it's moving along. But slowly. <laughs> Sorry, Nate. <laughs> but at least you have a better timeline than Mattachine Social did. <laughs> I'm going to continue working on this Five because... Years. What? Five years. Five years? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm four and a half. I can get it done four and a half years. But um, this, is, this is my learning experience. So, uh, again, I, I emailed you. Whether you use it or not, whether it's used very little, I don't expect you to focus on this in any way shape or form so you know and if it, it this is not streamlined there is a lot of geometry in this it's heavy mesh work we're looking already at 53,900 well wait a minute 593,000 faces <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's yeah. That's because everything in here is subsurfed uh, two levels. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. What? Oh God, I don't know. I don't know. It's been so long since I did shop for this computer. I don't know how much RAM I've got, but I, I think it's a, a couple gigs. I think. I'm not sure. 
All right, so uh, that is it for my uh, presentation on uh, little red cap assets. I've just got those three.